there's a cable running to your existing light barrier, the cable can be used as a fish line for the new cable. Just tape the new cable to it and you can pull it back to the circuit cabinet. Once you've brought the cable back to the circuit cabinet like this, push the cable up into the circuit cabinet and bring the other cable that you've taped to it up into the cabinet with it. That will feed the cable straight up through into the circuit cabinet. This one's catching on a zip tie, but once we pull it up through, then our new cable is fed up through into the cabinet where we need it. The cable that went to the old safety light barrier is the important one. This is the cable right here. You'll see that all these wires inside the cable are landed in different spots in the circuit cabinet. For example, this one lands on a relay. It lands at this SLS terminal right here. And it lands at this SLS terminal here. All of the cables, all of the wires that come out of this cable are already landed in the spots where they need to go. So you don't need to do anything else to land your new cables. All you have to do is pull this cable out of the bottom of the circuit cabinet away. And cut it off back about six or eight feet from, from where it lands in the circuit cabinet. If you cut it off like that, then you have bare ends of the cable that you can use to land on your new piano z safety switching device so we'll we'll cut the cable off now the next step is to remove the outer jacket from the cable so you can expose all the individual wires inside once you've got them exposed then you're ready to land them on the new piano z device once that cable is stripped back then it's time to add the piano z safety switching device the piano Z can normally be added in line right with any other piano Z safety switching devices that are already in the machine. It's usually the easiest and, and quickest way to get one in there. When you open the piano Z safety switching device, you'll notice that there are two terminals on the top and two terminals on the bottom of the device, P1 and P2, on both the top and the bottom. The circuit diagram calls out different wire locations that you need to hook up on P1 on the top for example uh, P1 top left is your A1 contact that's where we're going to be feeding power into the into the safety switching device P1 on the bottom has the A2 contact that's where we'll be putting ground into the device so the callouts on the circuit diagram match up with those with those terminals here on the safety switching device but you have to make sure that you're on P1 if it says A1 or 13 23 33 you're on P1 if you're on P2 you're going to be on S52 S34 and those things down here on this one so make sure that you're plugging your wires into the correct plug P1 or P2 and we'll install the safety switching device should have received a wiring diagram that looks like this with the with the new safety light barriers where it says the large numbers show the wires that can be reused that's what I was talking about with the cable that we pulled apart so you can see for example three four five and six right here those are already landed in the circuit cabinet we're just reusing them from the existing from the existing cable that was already running out to the circuit or to the uh, safety light barrier. So we've got one, two, seven, three, four, five, and six right there that are being reused. Three, four, five, and six are kind of off here to the left, out in space because they refer to contacts that are being made right here where it says point four and point five. 
on the PNOC safety switching device right there at 1314, uh, 1323, and uh, 1424. It's the same thing here, 1323, 1424. Those are the contacts that they're going into. So we're just gonna be reusing those wires to wire up most of the safety switching device. So as an example, we found wire number one. There's a little number one paint just printed right on the wire. It hooks into the plus 24 circuit right here. We're going to plug it into the Piano Z safety switching device on P1, terminal 33. So that's this top terminal right here, all the way over on the right hand side on the, on the safety switching device. So we'll cut this wire back, strip it, put a ferrule on it, and install it in there. We're crimping little ferrules on the ends of the wire, so I've just stripped the wire back and we're crimping a ferrule on there. You can get these ferrule crimping pliers and ferrules at, uh, at Amazon.com uh, but they make a great little tidy end on the cable so when you put it in the screw terminal it's not going to come loose and, uh, and crush the wires all over the place. So all we do now is pop the cable into the screw terminal and screw it in. We've landed all the wires where they go on the PNOC safety switching device. Now there are a few other wires that have to be run. The words already landed in the cabinet. For example, the A1 wire going to the PNOC X2.8P. That one wasn't already there. It doesn't have a big uh, blue number next to it. There's also a jumper wire that has to run from S12 to S34. That one needs to be added. We need a jumper between S21 and S22. And then we need to wire up all of the cables that are running out to the safety light barriers and make sure that they get landed on the piano C safety switching device as well. So on the cable that's going out to the safety light barrier, you're really going to want to do somewhat of the same thing that you did with the with the wire that was coming into the cabinet. You're gonna to want to strip this insulation back a good ways so that you can run the uh, so you can run the wires to different places within the circuit cabinet. So we'll, go, we'll do that now. We'll strip the insulation back and get it ready to land. So now I've stripped off the cables on the, I've stripped off the outer jacket on the cable for the safety light barrier. This is the one, happens to be the transceiver, the one that goes over by the saw, uh, by the saw box door. Um, and I'll be following the wiring diagram here with the black, white, brown, and blue plugging in, two going into the uh, uh, safety switching device over on the right, and two going into the uh, 24 volt and ground terminals. When you're stripping the cable back, make sure to strip enough off that you can get as far as you need to go. This one needs to reach all the way to the ground terminals, so I stripped it off far enough that, that they can uh, they can go back that far. I mean, the PNOZ safety switching device is right here, so I'm probably going to have to clip some of these wires back. But you just want to make sure that you can run the cables as far as they need to run the wires, sorry, as far as they can go, and that you're not going to have them having to go outside the cable trays. Don't run cables outside the cable trays, it looks terrible. When you're installing wires in terminal blocks, you'll want to use a small, straight bladed screwdriver like this. See how the sides of the screwdriver don't flare out much from the tip down to the, uh, down to the spot where it meets the shaft. It's very helpful for these terminal blocks. To open up a terminal block, you're going to want to slide the screwdriver in along the top of the square hole. Once you meet some resistance, push, and you'll feel a little click, and you can pry, and the wire will come loose. You pull that wire right out now. Same thing for putting a wire in. You can, you can put it right back in once you pry it up on it. It's time to install the safety lights. It goes down at the end of the machine. You can tell which one is which because they have a nice little sticker on the back here. 
So it's MLD 500 receiver and MLD 500 transmitter. Um, they are usually fairly easy to replace the old ones because you've got those two little bolts on the sides, one at the top and one at the bottom that you should be able to unbolt and install right in these brackets on the side of the new one. So when you're installing it, just use the same brackets. Try to get the new one at the same height as the old one. You're going to save yourself a lot of grief with lighting the safety light barriers up if you make sure that they're plumb left to right, front to back, and make sure that they're the same height off the floor. You want to make sure that the transmitter here at the door are at the same height off the floor and that they're both plumb. These two happen to be plumb because I plumbed them up yesterday while I was looking at whether or not these safety light barriers were any good. So I should just be able to set the height and, and uh, put the safety light barriers up there. You'll notice this safety light barrier has a little red window right here. That's a laser. Um, it's an alignment laser that can be used to line up the safety lights. These are the transmitter. It's got the little laser symbol on there. The laser is actually going to shoot out of that little red window there. You activate the laser by plugging in the transmitter, uh, plugging it into power, and then uh, you put a magnet on the outside of the transmitter around the edges here, and when it senses that magnet, the laser will turn on. So you can use that to set the two safety light barriers straight to each other. You can rotate it like this and make sure that, that it's pointing straight toward the receiver. Another note about setting up the safety light barriers, it's good to set up the brackets so that one is set up so that you can move the safety light barrier left and right and set up the other one so that you can move it front and back. That helps keep the adjustment range down to a minimum, but, um, or I guess it doesn't give you as much adjustment range as, as it might, but it, uh, it helps get the, it helps you adjust because you've got one side that does one thing. So you can adjust one side and tighten it down and then adjust the other side and tighten it down when you're plumbing it up.